subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi, welcome to Test Prep Training. Today we will discuss about, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ900 Exam. Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Exam AZ900 validates your fundamental knowledge of cloud services, and how Microsoft Azure provides the cloud services, irrespective of any specific role. The exam AZ900 is suited for, candidates looking to demonstrate working knowledge, foundation level of cloud services, and how these services are offered by Microsoft Azure. Who should take the exam? Target audience for the Microsoft Azure AZ900 exam includes First, candidates with non-technical backgrounds, can apply for this exam. Second, individuals involved in selling, or purchasing cloud-based solutions, and services. Third, candidates who have some involvement, with cloud-based solutions, and services. Fourth, candidates with a technical background, who wish to validate their foundational level knowledge, around cloud services. Now, we will talk about, learning objectives. Microsoft spells out in the exam objectives clearly, and outlines the topics, you are expected to understand before taking the Microsoft exam. Also, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Exam AZ900 exam provides, a learning path specifically designed for professionals, seeking to build a career in cloud computing. As the name, suggests is a basic fundamental exam, that covers general concepts of Microsoft Azure. First, understanding cloud concepts, and cloud models. Second, learning about, core Azure services. Third, learn about security, privacy, compliance, and trust. Fourth, understanding Azure pricing, and support. Learning path. The Microsoft Azure AZ900 exam tests your knowledge, based on primarily four learning paths as defined. It caters to general cloud concepts, together with an understanding of the foundational aspects, and benefits of Microsoft's cloud including subscriptions offered, available support plans available, understanding the difference between infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, and thereby identifying the services to use as per the requirement. Moreover, having an understanding of some systems administration concepts like, enforcing policies, and using role-based access control, applicable across Azure tenancy, regardless of the services you are using is also beneficial. Exam Format The Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ900 exam, comprises 40 to 60 questions that need to be answered, within 85 minutes. There are different types of questions, asked during the exam including case study, short answers, multiple choice, mark review, drag, and drop, etc. Further. This exam will cost you 99 US dollars. But remember, you have to score 700, or more points to pass the Microsoft AZ900 exam. Also, the exam is available in four languages. These include, English, Japanese, Chinese, Korean. Now, we will discuss about, how to schedule the exam. The Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ900 exam has been built to measure your ability to understand the basic of cloud concepts, understanding core Azure services, security, privacy, compliance, and trust, as well as Azure pricing, and support. First, for non-students interested in technology, schedule with Pearson VUE. Second, for students, or instructors, schedule with Certiport. Exam Detailed Course Outline First, describe cloud concepts, which compromises. 15 to 20 percent weightage for this exam second describe core azure services which compromises 30 to 35 percent weightage for this exam third describe security privacy compliance and trust which compromises 25 to 30 percent weightage for this exam fourth describe azure pricing service level agreements and life cycles which compromises 20 to 25 percent weightage for this exam section one Describe cloud concepts, 15 to 20%. Number one, describe the benefits and considerations of using cloud services. Describe terms such as, first, high availability. Second, disaster recovery. Third, backup and restore. Fourth, what is resilience in Azure? Fifth, regions and availability zones. Sixth, Microsoft Azure well-architected framework. Number two, Describe the differences between infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. It contains four subtopics which are First, describe infrastructure as a service. Second, 
Describe platform as a service. Third, describe software as a service. Fourth, compare and contrast the three different service types. Number three, describe the differences between public, private, and hybrid cloud models. It contains four subtopics which are First, describe public cloud. Second, describe private cloud. Third, describe hybrid cloud. Fourth, compare and contrast the three different cloud models. Read the Cloud Deployment Models Microsoft Documentation. Section 2, describe core Azure services, 30 to 35%. Number 1, describe the core Azure architectural components. It contains. First, describe regions. Second, describe availability zones, region pairs, and SLAs. Third, app reliability in Azure. Fourth, describe resource groups. Number 2, describe some of the core products available in Azure. It contains. First, describe products available for compute such as, virtual machines, virtual machine scale sets, app services, Azure container instances, and Azure Kubernetes service. Second, describe products available for net. Number 3, gateway, application gateway, and content delivery network. It contains. First, describe products available for storage such as, blob storage, disk storage, file storage, and archive storage. Second, describe products available for databases such as, Cosmos DB, Azure SQL database, Azure database for MySQL, Azure database for PostgreSQL, Azure database migration service. Third, describe the Azure marketplace, and its usage scenarios. Number four, describe some of the solutions available on Azure. It contains. First, Describe Internet of Things, IoT, and products that are available for IoT on Azure such as, IoT Hub, and IoT Central. Second, describe Big Data, and Analytics, and products that are available for Big Data, and Analytics such as, Azure Synapse Analytics, HD Insight, and Azure Databricks. Third, describe Artificial Intelligence, and products that are available for AI such as, Azure Machine Learning Service, and Studio. Fourth, Describe serverless computing, and Azure products that are available for serverless computing such as, Azure Functions, Logic Apps, and Event Grid. Fifth, describe DevOps solutions available on Azure such as Azure DevOps, and Azure Dev Test Labs. Sixth, describe the benefits, and outcomes of using Azure solutions. Seventh, describe Azure management tools. Eighth, describe Azure tools such as Azure Portal, Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI, and Cloud Shell. Ninth, describe Azure Advisor. Section 3, describe security, privacy, compliance, and trust, 25 to 30 percent. Number 1, describe securing network connectivity in Azure. It contains. First, describe network security groups. Second, describe application security groups. Third, describe user-defined rules. Fourth, describe Azure Firewall. Fifth, describe Azure DDoS protection. Sixth, choose an appropriate Azure security solution. Number two, describe core Azure identity services. It contains. First, describe the difference between authentication and authorization. Second, describe Azure Active Directory. Third, describe Azure multi-factor authentication. Number three, describe security tools and features of Azure. It contains. First, describe Azure Security Center. Second, describe Azure Security Center usage scenarios. Third, describe Key Vault. Fourth, describe Azure Information Protection. Fifth, describe Azure Advanced Threat Protection. Number four, describe Azure Governance Methodologies. It contains. First, describe policies and initiatives with Azure Policy. Second, describe role-based access control. Third, describe locks. Fourth, describe Azure Advisor Security Assistance. Fifth, describe Azure Blueprints. Number five, describe monitoring and reporting options in Azure. It contains. First, describe Azure Monitor. Second, describe Azure Service Health. Third, describe the use cases and benefits of Azure Monitor and Azure Service Health. Number six, describe privacy, compliance, and data protection standards in Azure. It contains. First, 
describe industry compliance terms such as GDPR, ISO, and NIST. Second, describe the Microsoft Privacy Statement. Third, describe the Trust Center. Fourth, describe the Service Trust Portal. Fifth, describe Compliance Manager. Sixth, determine if Azure is compliant for a business need. Seventh, describe Azure Government Cloud Services. Eighth, describe Azure China Cloud Services. Section 4, describe Azure Pricing, Service Level Agreements, and Life Cycles, 20 to 25%. Number 1, describe Azure Subscriptions. It contains. First, describe an Azure subscription. Second, describe the uses and options with Azure subscriptions such as access control and offer types. Third, describe subscription management using management groups. Number 2, describe planning and management of costs. It contains. First, describe options for purchasing Azure products and services. Second, describe options around Azure free account. Third, describe the factors affecting costs such as resource types, services, locations, ingress and egress traffic. Fourth, describe zones for billing purposes. Fifth, describe the pricing calculator. Sixth, Describe the total cost of ownership calculator. Seventh, describe best practices for minimizing Azure costs such as performing cost analysis, creating spending limits and quotas, using tags to identify cost owners, using Azure reservations and using Azure advisor recommendations. Eighth, describe Azure cost management. Now, we will talk about exam policies. While preparing for Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ900 exam, you will be solely responsible for understanding and complying with Microsoft certification exam policies, together with the specified exam delivery provider's policies and procedures. You can go through the exam retake policy, together with other Microsoft exam available and exam testing procedures. The exam policy page provides details of the exam provider's policies and procedures together with the exam provider's details. You will have 30 days after taking an exam to challenge your exam score for that exam. Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Preparation Resources We will guide you with a step-by-step -step guide to help you prepare for the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals AZ900 exam. First, Microsoft Learning Platform The first and foremost learning resource should be the Microsoft Learning Platform. For the AZ900 exam, it would be a smart choice to first go through the most trusted website to get authentic information about the exam. You can easily locate the AZ900 page, where you can just go through all the necessary information about the AZ900 exam. Second, Microsoft Documentation. After that, you can move on to Microsoft Documentation, where you can easily understand Microsoft Azure fundamentals. Besides this, you also get to know the different scales of different Azure services. Doing so helps you keep your eyes on the ticking clock, while learning so much new, to Azure technologies right from the experts. Third, Instructor-Led Training Consider yourself lucky as, Microsoft provides instructor-led training which is basically online learning, and training sessions by experts certified instructors. This particular training cannot be more advantageous, to all those who have tiny slots between their ongoing chores. Further, these are totally on-demand classrooms, where you arrange classes at your convenience, and learn at your pace. Fourth, Books are your best friends. Books are the most important ingredient of certification preparation. There are some excellent books ruling the marketplace, for years which you can use to prepare for the AZ900 exam. Firstly, refer Microsoft Azure for Beginners by Amni Ainsley. Secondly, you must refer Microsoft Azure Ultimate Beginner's Guide by Kenan Bismar. Also, refer Microsoft Azure Tutorial for Beginners by Dennis Hutton. Lastly, refer Beginner's Guide to Microsoft Azure. Fifth, join forums or study group. Online forums and study groups can turn out to be beneficial while preparing for the exam. Therefore, feel free to join study forums or study groups while preparing for the exam. However, remember the idea of joining any of these is completely subjective. Study groups help you stay connected with the other people who are also going through the same journey as yours. Sixth, practice tests. Practice test gives you exact insight where you actually stand. In other words, it helps you recognize your strengths and weaknesses. Here is some piece of advice. Go through this particular learning source only when you have gone through the whole syllabus. 
for more such videos, subscribe to our channel.